But we've been learning um, a lot about projection matrices and, and this kind of wonderful thing that they do for us. Um, we've shown how we can take a Y column that represents an unsolvable problem, uh, multiply it by uh, a projection matrix, and we get a new column P. And uh, P represents a solvable problem, and it's pretty close to Y. And, and so I finally want to, I've been kind of punting on it, but I want to come back and say, well, what does it actually mean for two columns to be close to each other? Um, let's get very precise about that. Uh, getting precise about it will involve defining something called a loss function. A loss function uh, can look at two columns and it'll tell us, well, um, how different are they from each other, right? If I kind of replaced one column with other, how much information am I losing? And, and so that'll give us some sort of score. And, and a score of zero is good. A score of zero means that my two columns are the same. And then bigger means that, well, they're less close. Um, so there's different metrics you could use here for your loss function that tells us whether or not our columns are close. Uh, one is Euclidean distance, which I'm going to start with, and then the other is mean squared error. And, and, and kind of where I'm headed is that uh, I'm going to be able to make the claim after I define these things that the projection matrix is giving us the P that is as close as possible to the Y. And, and that's true regardless of which of these two metrics you're using, right? So it's giving us the closest possible P that actually represents a solvable problem. Okay, so when we're talking about distance between two things, I think it's easier to start um, in terms of um, in, in terms of thinking about well, what's the distance between two points, right? So let's go back to geometry, and uh, and eventually by the end of this, right, I may be talking about hey, I have this big crazy uh, data frame with lots of columns, and I say what the distance is between p and y, or between say p and a, right? How can I compute that? Well, let's start with points first, and and so maybe let me just give one example. Um, if I have a, a, a right triangle, uh, so right triangle, uh, and uh, and then I have sides uh, three and four, then the long side is five in length. Maybe you remember that from uh, from from uh, geometry, and, and so I can compute that like this, right? I could say, well, one side is three, so I'm going to take three squared. The other side is four, so I'm going to take four squared. Uh, add those things up, and then I take the square root, which is just, in this case, 5, right? So that's how I can compute that. Um, let's say I have a data frame that happens to have exactly, uh, has, it happens to have exactly two rows, right? So I, I have here these four columns and these two rows, and uh, in that case, it's kind of easy to imagine how I might have a metric for, for measuring the distance between any two columns, right? Because for these two rows, uh, I, I could put a label on them. I could say, well, one row is the X row, the other row is the Y row. And, and then really what I could do is I could imagine uh, each of these columns as being a point on a plane. And then, well, the distance between columns is just the distance between those two points. So so I have that here, right? I have this data frame uh, and I'm transposing it so I can actually plot each column as a point, right? So I guess, what is this? This is zero, zero. So that is, um, that's column A. Uh, what is this other one here? I guess this is three, uh, four, right? So that's three, four. That must be column B. How could I compute the distance between these col two columns, right? Between any two columns. So, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say, uh, define Euclidean distance, and I'm going to pass in two columns, say column one and column two, and I'm going to call it like this: Euclidean distance, and uh, and then, well, maybe actually, let me just. Uh, I'm going to pass here for now. Let me pull out some different things. Let me say like data frame of uh, A, for example, or, or I don't know, data frame of B. Um, these are going to be my columns. So say something like that. Maybe that's C1 is this one, and then C2 is this other one. Oops, sorry. What am I doing there? Is, is B. And, uh, and, and how can I compute um, the, the distances between these? Well, one of the nice things I can do, right, if I peek at one of these, is I could say something like um, C2, or maybe I'll say like C1 minus C2, right? So, so I'm kind of going from here down to here. And when I do that, I see, well, I go left by three and then down by four, right? So those are my uh, kind of X differences and my Y differences. And, and the great thing when I have this formula is that I'm squaring each of these. So it doesn't kind of matter if I'm going, you know, uh, greater or smaller, I just care about the distance, right? Because I square that. So, so one way I could write this is I could say, well, 
you know, after I compute the a x distance and the, the x difference and the y difference, uh, let's just square it, right? So I get 9 and 16. Um, and then if I wanted to, I could uh, add those all up. Remember that, you know, I square the x, I square the y, and then I, uh, I, I take the sum of those things, right? That just me to 25, right? So what have I done so far? I've, I've, done my, I've done my squaring, I've done my summing, and, and now I want to take the square root, right? So let's do that. So the way I can take the square root is, well, there's different ways. I mean, I could say math that square root like this. That would get me five. It, you know, often rather than doing that, I think that I just remember that raising to the power of 0 0.5 also takes the square root. All right, so this is my formula, right? So I want to say, well, if I have these two columns, what is the distance between them? What is the Euclidean distance? And I could say, well, what is the Euclidean uh, distance of, of this column and, uh, and this column, right? Just like that and that's five um what, what about up here i think this is like twice as far right if i go from this one until uh the d column so let me try that hopefully that's 10 this time right trying to double the distance let me let me give that a, a kind of a test right so i'm gonna say a versus uh a d okay that's great uh, l l let me check these two i think these two columns should be a little bit closer what are those two those are the ones with the big x values. I guess that's like b and c, right? So, so this should be kind of a smaller distance between b and c, and uh, just like that. And great, right, that's like one point four something. I think that's a square root of two, right? Because it's one and one. And so that's all great. And so what's what's actually cool is that um, you can imagine if I wanted to go to three dimensional space, right? Maybe I would add like a z row, and uh, and it turns out that this little formula here works for three dimensions as well. And, um, and so that's what you would learn if you were kind of doing geometry in three dimensions. And what's really cool is that the analogy works even if uh, you imagine some sort of like 10 dimensional space, right? Um, I'm still kind of just drawing, you know, if I'm taking the distance between these, square it, the difference between these, square it, uh, the difference between these, square it, the difference between these, square it, you know, square all those differences, um, add them up, and then take the square root, and that's the Euclidean di di uh, distance, and it kind of works whether you have, you know, um, you're in a two-dimensional space or a million-dimensional space, right? I can compute the Euclidean distance. And, and so that's what I'm doing. When I have my uh, P uh, column and my Y column, uh, the way the projection matrix works is it really made those uh, have the smallest Euclidean space possible. So, so let me actually do this down here, right? So here I have a bunch of different things. Um, here is my original Y column. Um, let me actually just run this thing. I guess I'm gen randomly generating data on the fly. So if I want to, I can compute you know, Y versus what the projection matrix gave me. I also computed kind of a silly column here where every value um, is just like the average of the Ys, right? So I, I could kind of say like, well, how far is Y versus P? How far is Y versus A? I, I can just do that. I can say Euclidean distance of, for this big data frame, I can say data frame of, of Y versus data frame of, of P, right? So I run that and I can kind of get a distance there. And I could also compare, well, what if instead of having this P that I get from the projection matrix, I have this A, right? Because A also represents a solvable problem, right? I mean, that's a straight line as well. I do that and I can see, okay, well, it, it's much better to be going through through with my p than my other one, right? And then if I probably if I draw against like say something like uh, x, it's going to be huge, right? Very different, right? So I, I can see that p is actually pretty good in terms of column, right? P is pretty close to y. The other uh, metric I just want to very briefly go with is called the mean squared error, and uh, and it's pretty similar. I'm just going to copy this up here. Uh, the mean squared error is also a common way people will compare two columns, and and, and the difference is that and instead of doing this, instead of like adding, um, instead of taking the square root at the end, we're just trying to, instead of uh, taking the square root, we're just trying to divide by the length of, you know, how many rows I have, right? So, so why do I call it mean squared error? Well, this is the error. This is the squared error. And mean means the average. So, so here I get a bunch of values and I'm taking the sum and dividing by how many I have. And, and this is what we'd call the mean squared error error or <clears throat> maybe just MSE. And um and what what went wrong here? Uh P error of B 
well, what am I even doing here? I guess I guess I don't have those columns anymore. So I might say like, what is the difference between uh, between y and p? And I get that. Actually, in this case, it's just kind of coincidentally pretty similar. Um, or I could say like, what is the difference between y and uh, oh, well, it's exactly the same because I'm not calling it. Okay, there there we go. And then I could also get the mean squared error between say like y and a. And again, I see it's much better. Like P is kind of performing better than uh, than than A, right? So P is as close as possible to Y as any column could be that still represents a solvable problem. 